All right, integration. Man, we've spent so much time on derivatives, it's nice to get into some integration. Now here's the deal. We are going to be talking about approximating the area under the curve. 5.1, which we're talking about today, and 5.2, which we're talking about also next, right? That's all in the same group here. Um, this is the basic concept of integration, all right? Um, just like we learned the basic concept of derivatives, we are learning the basic concept of integration, and then we'll have our rules that go with it. So here we're just talking about a basic concept of integration. When you integrate, what you are actually doing is approximating the area under the curve. That is what's going on, all right? So if I am going to make this bigger here, if I have this curve here of t squared, what we are going to do is we are going to make rectangles in order to approximate. And why would we do a rectangle? Because it's easy, yes. So we know the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width, right? So if I have this area, I'm going from A to B total, and I've got this rectangle that I'm looking at. I've got my length here, and I've got my width. Ooh, that's a little big for that top one, isn't it? I'm just going to do like that. So I've got my length and I've got my width that I'm talking about, right? So the other way to say my length here is also my height. So I'm looking at the height of the rectangle. So the kicker to this one is I'm looking at my height of my rectangle and my height of my rectangle hits my function. And look at what's happening here. I've got this whole rectangle. So I'm length times width. Look how much space I got over here. Look how much space I'm missing right here, right? That's the point of this. If I do just two rectangles, is that going to be a good indication of this area that's underneath it, which is what I'm actually trying to find? No, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. There's business outside of it. I'm missing a whole lot on the inside. That's crazy. But look at what happens whenever I put more rectangles in there. I'm still going from zero to eight, but I just have more rectangles. Look at this space is less, right? I've got some out here, but that is less. Well, look what happens when we have even more rectangles. See what's happening? So the more rectangles that you have in there, the more it looks like your rectangles are filling the space that we're trying to figure out and less waste is coming to the outside. All right, so you see what's happening here. Okay. So, that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be just um, scratching the surface. I just want to, to pull that out there. We're getting the basic concept down. So, we're going to talk about a lot of things here, but I want your basic concept to be happening. So, suppose I have this closed interval containing all of these sub-intervals. I have the length, the equal of the length. This change in x, delta x here, right, is the change in x. This is representative of the width. So the width of my rectangle, let me squeeze this in. The width of my rectangle that we're talking about there, that's the change in x because this is the x-axis, right? So this is my change in x. Delta just means change. Delta is that triangle, just Greek letter. And that's going to be b minus a divided by n. So my b minus a divided by how many rectangles I have. So b minus a, eight minus zero divided by two, that means each rectangle is four. That's my width. Can we not look at this and determine that? Yeah. What if I wanna divvy this bad boy up into one, two, three, four rectangles? So I've got eight minus zero, which is eight, right? divided by four and each rectangle has a width of two. Do you see where that's coming from? That is my width. So that is the generic formula so we can figure out the width of each rectangle. Okay, A is starting here at the beginning and B is however far we go from there with all these end points. And then we have these sub intervals called grid points that we're looking at and they can um, create these partitions. Here's the moral of the story, this regular partition situation, 
just means I'm breaking this up into multiple rectangles because rectangles are easy to figure out. All right? Okay. So that's the basic idea. The whole concept of integration, when we integrate, the whole concept is we are finding the area under the curve. If I have uh, just a generic area, or if I have a specific area, just the same thing with derivatives. Sometimes we found the generic derivative. Sometimes we found it at a specific point, right? Sometimes I just want a generic integral for my entire function. Sometimes I want it over a specific value. Same thing. Okay, we'll get into it more, I promise. But I just want to make sure you get the basic concept of what's going down here. So whenever I look at these partitions, all right, we are going to do a Riemann sum is what this is called. We're still doing the area of a rectangle. Area of a rectangle. And my area of a rectangle is still length times width, and I know my width is going to be delta x, right? We already determined that. And my length that we have here is going to be f of x. That's going to be my height here of my function of these rectangles. Where is my rectangle hitting my function? And that is going to be that height. So I really should type, put this as x asterisk sub k. Can you see that? It's kind of crazy stuck in there with that dark, isn't it? So that's what I'm looking at here. I've got my rectangle. This is my length or my height, and then this is my width that I have for the rectangle. All right, and you can see that right there. This is my length times width. And those are just the values we're looking at. Now here's the kicker. When I say this, that is one rectangle only. Well, I got a bunch of rectangles that I'm trying to put together down here, right? So a sum, a sum means that I'm going to take rectangle one right here, and I'm gonna add it to rectangle two, and I'm gonna add it till I get all of my rectangles in there. That's what we're doing, all right? That is called a Riemann sum, a Riemann sum. And I can say, okay, the left of my rectangle is hitting that, the right of my rectangle is hitting my function, or the midpoint of my rectangle is going to hit that function. Now here's the deal, basic working knowledge. I'm gonna say it again, basic working knowledge. I used to get into this a whole lot more, we do a whole lot more work for it, but I don't think it really worked with, I mean, I don't think it helped with your learning. What I need you to know is that whenever I integrate this, I am looking at the area under the curve. Here's a breakdown of this. I'm going to bring this up here so you can see this part of it. All right, here's a breakdown. When I have a rectangle, if I'm going from the left like I am right here, all right, if I'm looking at the left of my rectangle, I'm going to make this big so you can really see it here. That means the left point of my rectangle is what is hitting my function. That makes it on the left. That is that left Riemann sum. All right, so this tells me whenever I'm bringing this down and a, a sum is the sigma that I'm looking at. So sigma, it's that, uh, that sum look, I don't know what else to call it. It's a capital sigma, it's just what it is. K is gonna go from one to N. All right, and N here is my number of rectangles. That's how many rectangles that I'm adding up. And this is F of X sub K with that asterisk, because it depends on where I'm hitting it, times my width, which is my change in X. So it is always 100% of the time going to be my height of my rectangle times the width of my rectangle, that's what's gonna happen every single time, no matter what, all right? The big question here is what is going to be my height? How am I going to hit this? The height of my rectangle, where is it gonna hit on my function? And for the left, then it's hitting up here at that value. So my x 
sub k asterisk here is actually equal, that's an asterisk, is equal to a plus this k minus 1 delta x. This means that this is the x value to plug in, that's a u, x value to plug into the function to get the height. So if I'm going to the left, and so I'm going to squeeze this in a little bit here, this is what this um, up here is actually saying, right? This x minus 1 that I have up here. So this is the left end point. This is what it's actually saying. Oops. Let me make this bigger again. I'm saying I'm going to plug in this part of my function. So whenever I want to say what is the leftmost value, this is the leftmost value because this is going to be my height. Let me try that again. This is the height. Nobody could read that. There we are. That is going to be the height. And you've got from here to here, this is going to be my width because that's the change in X. Now here's the kicker, right, that we're looking at. So this part right here, um, starting at the beginning, this is going to be K equals zero. This is K equals one because it's the first. It's that it's the end of right here, that first unit. That's what I'm talking about, that first unit out. Then, of course, this one's going to be K is equal to two, etc. And that's where it's coming from. That is why I have this K minus one because here K is equal to one. It's that very first edge of the rectangle. And then it's going to hit it back right here. So that's why I'm doing minus one. And I start at that K equals zero. All right, because that's going to be on the left side every time. We're going to do an example, so sit tight, hang with me, hang with me. I promise we're going to do a, an example that we're looking at here. I just want to make sure we're getting the basics down of what we have. So here, this one is hitting on the right every single time. So look at where my height comes in. My height comes in right here at this first value, right? So whenever I'm summing up this little fella, K is going to go from 1 to N because it's still the number of rectangles that we have. F of X sub K star delta X. My star here, oops, that's a K with the asterisk up above, is going to be straight up the K value that I'm looking for because over here, this is, this is just the beginning, but I've got my width again. And I've got my height, and my height here is going to be at this first, k is equal to 1. And that's where we're starting with. All right? Okay. So if I'm going to the left, here is my generic. But if I hit it to the left, then it starts back over here. If I'm hitting it to the right, well, this is the very, this is the edge of my very first rectangle. This makes a full rectangle. Over here, oh, no, I got to go back to the beginning, and that's why I do k minus 1. Basically, look at your, look at what it is that you have, and then you can determine where that is. Now I'm hitting it in the middle, because this is the midpoint. So whenever I set up my Riemann sum, I'm still going to go from 1 to n, and then this is all looks exactly the same. The only thing that changes is, where is my height, right? Where is this hitting my function? What do I plug into that value? Well, if this is k is equal to 1, then where am I coming back here at? Yeah, I'm subtracting off a half, right? Because this is the very beginning. And in order to get here's the end where my k is equal to 1, I got to go back a half in order to hit this value. Yeah. So this is x sub k asterisk here is actually going to equal a plus k minus 1 half delta x. So I can hit in the middle, right? I can hit to the right of my rectangle 
or I could be hitting on the left of my rectangle. Here's the moral of the story, all right? We are not going to solve something that looks like this, just full disclosure. I just want you to get the idea of if I have infinitely many rectangles, which is what we're going to end up getting here, but for now, we're hitting the basics. Oh, I want to find, I want to estimate my area under the curve. I'm going to estimate what's going on with this. All right, I want to estimate. Okay, well, depending on what it looks like, is it going better to the left? How does that differ from to the right? And how does that differ from the middle? That's what we're trying to figure out, right? Which one looks the best? The middle, right? Because I'm hitting right here in the middle. It's going a little above, a little below. This is full above. This is full below. Okay, let's do an example. We are So this is what your homework is going to look like. You're not going to have to do a bunch of formulas. We are just going to be plugging this stuff in, and then you're going to see where that is. So I'm on the interval here from 1 to 5, and I'm, you're going to get a graph. And you're going to physically see where is this hitting. So right here, I'm hitting on those rectangles. So this is to the left, right? I want to find my left and my right Riemann sum. So if I'm looking to plug this height in and I'm looking at my width right here, well, what's my width? Yeah, one, right? That's obvious. So my width is going to be one every time. I am adding up these values. So when I add these up, if I'm coming from the left here, I'm saying I'm going to have the width of these rectangles times the height, width times the height. So if I want to get the height, this is going to be F of, and then right here, the 1 is what comes up and hits this. So F of 1 times the 1, because this is the height times the width. Do you see what just happened? There's rectangle number 1. Then I'm going to add rectangle number 2, F of 2 times the 1, which is my width. Rect so this is rectangle 1, 2, 3, 4. Do you see that? So this is number 1. This is number 2. F of 3, if I'm looking at this, because in my third rectangle, it is hitting the height where 3 is. That's where that's coming from, times my width of 1. So this is rectangle number 3. I have rectangle number 4 is F of 4 times 1. This is rectangle number 4. Do you see that? I have four rectangles. N equals 4. So I have four rectangles that I'm looking at. I have to figure out the height and the width of each one, get those areas, and then add them together. So you legit do that. My function is 1 over x. So this is 1 over 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2 times 1 because I'm taking, let's show it, this input and I'm plugging it in. f of 2, right? f of 3, etc. Is this making sense? And 1 fourth times 1. So they're all times one, so I've just got what that is. I'm going to get a common denominator, and that's going to be a 12 here. So I've got 12 over 12 plus 6 over 12 plus 4 over 12 plus 3 over 12. So what is this? Oh, this will give me 10. So 13. This is 13 plus 12. Is I get 25 over 12. All right, that's it. That's that is my area under the curve. If I'm going to the left with four rectangles, that's all we're doing. The concept I want you to get is that when I'm going to integrate, we are approximating that area under the curve. All right. Well, now let's take a look what's happening here to the right. I'm gonna squeeze this in a little bit. To the right that I'm looking at, here is where I'm hitting my rectangles. 
So my width here is still a one, but my height, look at what's happening on this first one. My height is going to be for rectangle number one, is going to be f of two times one. And this is rectangle number one, do you see that? It's wherever your height is. When if I'm solving this down, let me make this bigger because I know you can't see that. So here, where's my height hitting? It's lining up with this two. So f of two is going to give me the height of this rectangle. That's all that I'm talking about. f of three is going to be the height of rectangle number two. See that? Okay, that's what we're talking about here. So I have plus f of three, because that's where it lines up, times one. So this is rectangle number two. f of four times one is rectangle number three, plus f of five, because that's where this last one ends up over here, right? This little tiny one. Times one, this is gonna be rectangle number four. And then we literally do the exact same thing. Then you just plug all that stuff back in. I've got one half times one plus one third times one, one fourth times one, one fifth times one. So we can get a common denominator. What's common with two, three, four, five? Is that going to be 60? Because 20 won't work because of three. So I'm going to say it has to be 60. So if I get my common denominator here of 60, I know two times 30 will get the job done. Three times 20 will get the job done. Four times 15 gets the job done. And five times what? 12, and then add those up. So I've got 50 from here, 50 plus 27. So 50 plus 27. 50 plus 27 is 77, right? Yeah. Now check something out here. Which one of these has the greater area? First of all, just looking at this, which one do you think is going to be bigger? We should have done that first. Oh, well, slow and steady wins a race. It's going to be this one, right? All of these go over the top. So my area is going to be bigger there. All of these are underneath. So my area is going to underestimate. Whenever I have this one, it's going to overestimate in this particular one. It's not always going to work that way. The left doesn't always, the right doesn't always. It just depends on what it looks like. All right, so it's nice to know if I'm going to overestimate or underestimate. 25 twelfths, this is just over 2, right? 77 over 60, this is just over 1. About Mm, about one and a fourth, right? So this one's obviously smaller. If I'm looking to compare back and forth, I'm just doing that. You don't have to do that for your homework. I'm just doing that so you can see what's going on. For your homework, you have to actually find the areas and then add those up. Not bad. The concept is finding those areas. Okay.